Deb here, your spiritual cheerleader and mentor. Welcome to Greater Is Jesus In Me YouTube channel. And you know what to do. Subscribe now. And friends, today we're talking to our single ladies. Yes, our single ladies. And today I have my special guest, comedian Ella Dispeller. But today I'm talking with my beautiful dear friend, Christina. Hey, Christina, how you doing? Good, Deb. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm just so happy to be here with you and seeing you again, my friend. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. We've been wanting to for some time. It's finally happened. Yes, yes, yes. So um, we're just going to jump right into this conversation. So, well, but before I jump in, I want to say that God keeps blessing me with um, wonderful women like Christina. And I'm so thankful to God for that. And um, so we're talking to the single ladies today. And um, I want you to know that um, I know how you feel. And that is why we're having this conversation today. And Christina is a single lady. Mm -hmm. And um, we are just going to let this flow. We're going to let God take control of this conversation. And uh, we're going to start out with, um, uh, I'm just going to start out with a few questions to Christina. And, and as I said, we're just going to make this flow. And I know this is not an easy conversation. And it's right. really Christina talked about this is not an easy conversation. This is not a conversation a lot of women have, single women have for many reasons. Uh, they don't want people to know how they really feel. Mm -hmm. But uh, ladies, this is your opportunity to have this conversation with us. So when I'm talking with Christina, I'm also talking to you directly and you answer these questions and reach out to us. Mm -hmm. Again, send, leave your comments and um, I will get back to you. So let's uh, let's get right in, into it, Christina. Go. Oh. So uh, growing up, did you ever think about um, getting married? Of course, every girl does, Deb. Of course. Yeah, and and I guess it, me too. Um, do you have an idea, like a, about what age you started thinking? Mm. Um. Probably realistically about 13, 14, maybe younger, but, you know, you start courting around 13, 14, 15. And, you know, the first boyfriend is like, oh, my gosh, he's going to be my boo. So, yeah, I, I was a teenager when I probably younger, but I think definitely teenage years. I thought about what I would look like as a wife, as a mother, you know, of course I had those thoughts. Okay. And then uh, you talked about uh, what uh, you said about 13. Okay. So did you, uh, what, at what age did you started dating? See, Deb, now you're making me go way back into the 19th. Yes, yes. I want you to go way back. Yes. I remember when I started, when I started dating. So we, we're talking everything now. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> so me, oh gosh, I think I started dating probably 14 15. Yeah, I was, as my grandma said, I was fast. You know, I was fast, little girl. I liked the boys. But yeah, I think my first real boyfriend was 16. And mm -hmm. oh my God, in love with him. I don't call names, you know. But yeah, I remember around that time, I thought like, wow, I was, I thought I was in love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. And and then after, okay, so uh and I think many of the ladies um, relate can relate to that. I relate to that too. Uh, started 13, my first boyfriend, and then moved on from there. And then, of course, it, it, it you break up and stuff like that. And I think at that age, it's even though it hurts, mm -hmm. it really starts to hurt later on. So tell me about like your breakups. How did you feel when you broke up or when... Either you broke up or he broke up with you. No, I was much. I was always the loyal person. I mean, I could talk to a man for three days, and he was my boyfriend. Although that wasn't the. But of course, when someone breaks up with you, or they're cheating, or you find out that 
they say they don't want to be in a relationship anymore. If you don't have a healthy self-esteem, it'll crush you. And I think even you can have a healthy self-esteem. Anytime somebody, if you're dealing with issues of the heart, it always hurts. I think for me, I think it hurt worse because for me, I don't feel like I never ever got the nurturing or the talking to on how to be a young lady, on how to date, on how to court. So for me, I kind of got into things, doing my own thing, learning the hard way and really just kind of bottom when those relationships failed. So they were tough, tough mm -hmm. moments. So people feel different kind of ways when there's a breakup. They look at mm -hmm. it as, sometimes as a rejection mm -hmm. and then they start to blame themselves, especially women start to question themselves, um, question their worth. Yeah. They ask themselves, um, what did I do wrong? Why me? Um, why, why, um, what did I do for him to leave me? Um, and and I work love, you know? exactly, exactly. And, and it, and it really starts to work on your mind and play with your mind. Even if you are a woman that is very confident and, and, and it's, and if, a, if it's a woman that is not that confident or have low self-esteem, it can really be devastating, especially depending on how many times it happens. Right. That's right. You would so, think that you would go along. Sometimes you do. And sometimes you don't. And you keep having these same patterns, these same patterns. Right. And you really just got to wake up. You really just got to start looking deep down inside and saying, okay, what am I doing to attract these type of people that I keep getting heartbroken by? So you got to do your work. Got to right. do your work. Right. And it takes two because sometimes there are things that you, you are doing and that you can improve on, but it's not all you. It's right. also the other person. And you have to be open-minded and, and you have to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. because you sometimes I find women finding excuses for the guys. Been there. <laughs> you know, the guy is the one that, and then they say, well, you know, if I'd done this and if I'd said this and if I'd, so uh, again, that self doubt starts to set in. And every time you get into a relationship and you break up, it kind of starts weighing more and more and more on you. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, ladies, we uh, been there. So, I, I understand how how you how you're feeling, and we are here also to uplift you, not only Absolutely. uplifting uh, Christina, but uplifting you to to make you know that none of us is perfect, and we all have things that we can work on, improve on. But it is not you. Mm -hmm. Don't blame yourself. Okay. Um, the other question is. Hmm. Let me see. Where was I? So, um, and, and we just talked about this. Um, how did you feel when the relationship did not work? And, um, I know that a lot of women, they feel hurt, pain, disappointment, depression, and, and some have even contemplated mm -hmm. suicide. So I think you mm -hmm talked about that a little bit, but you want to get in, how did you feel when, um, when the relationship did not work? And, and to let's look at age at, at what time it really started to weigh on you. Ugh. Okay. Let me just say this. Like I have, I, I'm just going to be transparent because mm -hmm. we talked about that. Mm -hmm. I have never really known how to date. I'm a 53 year old woman right now. I'm just learning how to, how I should be courted. You know, of course that's old school. But like I said, I mean, when, when I was younger, my grandmother said this, um, she, I remember getting my cycle and I remember her buying me some maxi pads and she set them on the table and she said, here, and you fool it, boys, you'll get a baby. That was pretty much the sex ed education that I got. <laughs> so I never how to date a guy. I was always, like I said, I was kind of fast, honey. I was out there in those streets. So I did not, unfortunately, have real true 
<laughs> excuse me, generic relationships. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to be honest. I don't want to put too, too much out there. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. You don't I want to. Yeah, I never learned. Mm -hmm. But I do remember involved with somebody. I always thought they were my boyfriend and they were just out to do what they wanted to do or get what they wanted to get. And there were times where I was mature enough to really understand, you know, it was, you know, the comments, oh, you're cute or, you know, you, you know, you, you got this and you got that. And, and so when you don't receive the love and the affection when you're younger, you mm -hmm. don't, what, it looks good. It sounds good. But then before you know it, it's over then you're left with all these emotions, guilt, anger, rage, embarrassment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then Deb, some of us have even gone to the other point of this thing where we become the aggressor. Mm. So I don't know how many women will be honest to talk about that, but sometimes when you've been broken or heartbroken, time after time after time and you can't figure out what you're doing or why these men are doing this sometimes some women take on that um male role mm -hmm. and it become the aggressor and so at that point after you've been hurt over and over your heart becomes hard mm -hmm. and the older you get if you haven't healed in those areas it can wreak havoc on you and you know i've shared some things with you in the past mm -hmm. about Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know for me, I think, like I said, even in my early 50s, I'm just learning how to govern myself as a lady mm -hmm. and to know what things I should do, what things I shouldn't do, what I want and what I don't want. And that if this person decides that they're going to walk away, T.D. Jakes, that gift of goodbye, it doesn't matter anymore. But. 10, 15, 20 years ago, I didn't know how to deal with the rejection, mm -hmm. pain, the depression. Mm -hmm. It was hurtful, disappointing. And you do think something's wrong with you. You're looking at all these other people and you think they've got it going on and they blah, blah, blah. You don't know what's happening to them because a lot of us put on the side. We don't want to let people know we've gotten burned or gotten bruised or gotten mm -hmm. harmed. Mm -hmm. No, and so I've always tried to be transparent and to be open, but sometimes it's too much shame associated with it. I've been there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things too, um, I think when women get into relationships, and as you say, uh, they, I, I, I think because you may have not had a role model meaning a, a dad or mm -hmm. mom and dad um, role model or, or males in your life and so forth. You don't know how exactly to deal with the men and in a relationship. And one of the things that I, I, I've seen women do, and I probably started out like that, but I quickly learned, don't like to ask certain questions up front. You took the words right out of my mouth. Because, yes. because the fear of turning the person off, uh, the person leaving them, walking away. So even though the women feel certain ways, they don't want to express it. Because as you said, most women, if not all women, I know when you're growing up, you think about getting married one day. Mm -hmm. And you think of meeting this, the right person for you. And again, the right person for you, because not everybody is right for you. They might be right, a good person, but not everybody is good for each other. Okay. And you think about that. You think about uh, sharing your life with someone, having kids and so forth. So, on. so most women think that way. I don't know what the men think because I'm not a man, but I'm telling you about the women. And then when you start to get older, you're in your teenage and then you 18, 19, 20 and your girlfriends dating, getting married and so forth. And you are kind of waiting for your turn mm -hmm. to get married because uh, you wind up being bridesmaid for a lot of weddings. And then you say, when is this? When is, when is my turn? Mm -hmm. So all this thing goes through your mind. But then when you get into a relationship with a guy, you don't want to express to this person that, hey, you know what? 
I would like to get married one day. What about you? Mm. Because they feel that if they have this conversation with the guy, it's going to be a turn off. And they'll say, well, you know, it's too early to have this conversation and so forth. And maybe when you're in your 20s, might be too early. You might think it's too early or maybe in your 30s. But when you're 40, 50, 60, look, you don't have time to waste. To me, <laughs> you need to be up front. We are grown folks up in here. You, there's some attraction while we're together. And if I'm feeling, I'm saying, I'm not saying that because you are in the relationship is going to turn into marriage, but I like to have an idea what you think about marriage. Do you, would you consider if this is going well, taking that step? I don't see anything wrong with that, asking that question up front, because my thing is don't waste my time. Well, you know, we station several months yes. ago, but I want to go back a little bit to what you said about the, you know, the teens, the 20s. Like I said, I didn't know how to do, you know, when I would meet someone, I was already married to them, right? <laughs> I didn't for it. So instead of us learning how to date or court a few people so that we don't get our emotions wrapped up into the one person. That's, and yes, when, yes, that's key there. Yeah. And also you're not as likely to be intimate with three people mm -hmm. if you're dating. Up Jim and Jane, and you're seeing them maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You're feeling them. You're you're having fun with them, but you're not as likely to get romantically involved with three people, you know, as opposed to that one person. If you're with that one person, you're thinking all this la la stuff. This person is probably still dating one or three people, and so I think in our twenties, if we can learn to have that experience, that way. When we get to this age, and if we haven't really had a lot of relationships, it's not as difficult and we're not as desperate. Mm -hmm. Need or want to get married as if we were when we were 20 something. Again, I didn't do that. I was always hopeful of someone seeing me worthy of being marriage material. Now, I will say this. And my girlfriends can, can vouch for 20 long years. My comment was, I ain't married nobody, you know, and I thought it was cute because I didn't see good, healthy relationships around me. And I thought, if this is what marriage is, I don't want this. And so I did what I think when I was 30, I started saying, I'm not marrying anybody because I was a vibrant person. I liked being out, you know, I was doing my comedy and stuff. And I liked where I was going. I didn't want anybody to hold me down. But at the same token, I remember, this was probably a couple of years ago, came home from a gig and I felt so empty because I was like, I didn't have anybody to share it with. And so I remember saying I wasn't going to marry anybody and God heard it. And one day, I mean, I broke down and I sobbed because I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. I didn't really mean it, but I want I want to mate. I want to be married, you know? So, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I hear you. But um, it, it it is tough. And it is tough as you go to the different decades where you are in your teens. Mm -hmm. And then now you are in your 20s. Then you're in your 30s. Mm. Then your forties and then you're in your fifties and every decade you're like, um, okay, is it going to happen or not? And I've talked to women and I'll, I'll tell you that when some women, when, when they are in relationships and they break up and all this stuff, one of the things they have mentioned to me is that they, they tell me, I don't feel pretty. Mm. And that makes me feel so sad. Yeah. And I tell him, look, this is not it. You are beautiful. You mm -hmm. are beautiful. Even if a relationship did not work, you are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and again, that thing about blaming yourself for it not working out and feeling um, unworthy. Mm -hmm. But please know, you are beautiful. You are worthy. It just didn't work for you. And sometimes it is a blessing in disguise, even though in the moment yes. you're hurting, you have that pain, you feel like, oh, wow, again. But 
you don't know if this was the right person for you and God is removing that person out of your life to prepare you for that right person for you. So never lose hope. Never lose hope. No matter how old you are, because some people think, okay, well, I'm 40, 50 and nothing happened. You don't know. Yeah. You meet somebody yeah. in your 60s, 70s, but you just have to trust God and and ask God to give you peace while you're waiting. That's mm -hmm. the other thing. Peace while you're waiting. And if it doesn't happen, give you peace to accept whatever it is God, God has for you and to fill you with other things so that you can continue enjoying your life. You have yeah. to enjoy yeah. your life and not be dependent on someone else for you to enjoy your life. Mm -mm. And, you know, we all want a companion, as you say, you want a companion. And that's, and, and I'm not saying don't lose the hope, keep hoping, but still keep living and enjoying life. Man, you, you have said a mouthful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In fact, the things I heard you say was, you've heard that women said they don't feel pretty. Listen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And. It's one thing when you don't feel pretty because you don't feel pretty. It's another thing when you don't feel pretty because someone has broken up with you and then you're trusted, you're, um, you're doubting yourself. And I love what you said about find some things to do. Get you a hobby. Take a trip somewhere. I think it's very important for us when that person decides they're going to leave. Okay, take your 24 hours and cry. That's it. Yes. After, get over it. Get up. Crying is good. Crying is healthy. A yes, good is. cry is healthy. Yes. Yes. And okay, I'll give you 48 hours because I used to go two months and then I went, okay, a month, I'm over him. And then, as you know, my recent experience was maybe two weeks. I was like, I'm over that. And what you said was, how do we not know it's a blessing that God is protecting us mm -hmm. from something? I am so grateful that situation did not work out. But I learned from that situation that I was still needing to feel validated. Oh, this guy, he's retired and he's got this credential and he's got these many degrees. Well, that was his stuff. What, that didn't have anything to do with me. Why was I getting excited? Because mm -hmm. I feel, wow, this person has all this and he wants me. Well, we should feel like, yes, you know, well, this person, he wants me because of me. Because this is who I am. This is who God created me to be. Mm -hmm. And I have to ride off of his credentials to make myself feel pretty, to make myself feel good. So many of us rely on other things and other people yes. to validate us. Yes. But God has validated us. Yes. Amen, sister. Yes. Mm. yes. Then we get to that point where we really know who we are and whose we are. It The hurt like you're 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 more easily able to move on from that person or that situation. And then it takes us sometimes, how do I want to say this? We have to look at ourselves and you know, we talked about pump, play up our pretty. Yes. You know, we don't need a man to break up with. We should always be in that mode of playing ourselves up, feeling good about ourselves, so that when they come along and they don't approve of us, the gift of goodbye. And you're still moving. Yeah. And the thing is, um, a lot of women might think, and I've heard this, oh, he completes me. No, you want him to complement you, not complete you, oh. because you are already complete. God made you complete. God carefully made you, wonderfully and fearfully made you, and you are already complete anybody comes mm -hmm. into your life is to compliment you compliment enhance uplift yes yes yeah but yes so be yeah, yes. just like a lot it's stuff that we've heard oh he completes me no i came out of my mother's womb i was already <laughs> you don't complete me you enhance me you compliment yes. me that's it yes 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 and, you know, um, and we, we're going to be kind of all over the place because I'm kind of looking at my notes. And if I skipped anything, I'm coming back to that, that, mm -hmm. that conversation. But when I talked about um, asking the guy his intentions, that's upfront. And as I said, a, a lot of women are uncomfortable doing this. And my thing is, is, is 
some of it is because of fear to hear his answer. If it's not what is aligned with your feelings and fear of him walking away, which I talked about. And it's best to hear it up front mm -hmm. and know where this person stands. So you can make a decision. Some women will say, hey, oh, you know what? That's fine. I'm going to take my chance and go along with it. But at least you know if the person is not uh, in, in sync with you in terms of because some guys uh, tell you blade, um, very openly. If you ask them a question, no, I don't want to get married. Mm -hmm. so it's up to you if you want to continue in that relationship. But at least you know up front where he stands in terms of that. And he knows where you stand. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. grown folks conversation. Why can't you have that conversation? Right. That, that's a good one. And I, I, I've, I've been there. And I think one thing I would say, too, to the ladies that are listening Whenever the guy says, let's just see where it goes. If you know that you want a committed relationship or marriage, run. I don't care how, <laughs> I don't care how good he done, done the SEX or whatever. When he said, well, uh, let's just see where it goes. Baby, it can go anywhere, but it's probably not going to be with you. Right? I've heard mm -hmm. it. And, uh, you know, sometimes some of us will stay because we think maybe we can make him change his mind. Oh, yeah. I've heard I don't that too. No. If he said, let's let's just play it like it is, or let's just see where it goes, it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, for F-A-C-T, for a fact, I, I've had the experience. Yes, and, I hear you. And then, so, as you, you at the beginning, you said you are, uh, well, at some point of the conversation, you said you're 53 years old. You have never been married. You're never been you've been single. You've been a single lady your whole life. You have no kids. And yeah. we go back to when you were a teenager, your early teens, and you thought of this and so forth. Now you are 53 years old. How do you feel now? Hmm. I regret the fact that I didn't have children. I've always wanted to be a mom. I, I love kids. I've always loved kids. But obviously that was not in God's plan. I had to accept that. Um, you know, I my mom's in a nursing home. And so my mom is my big baby. Mm -hmm. And so our roles have reversed. So, but I'm open to, and I've always been open to a man with children. So at this point, I know that if I get married, he's got children. He's probably going to have grandchildren and maybe even great grandchildren at this age. I've always wanted a big family. And so I'm still open to marriage. Um, and I welcome children and, and grandchildren. But he's got to be a man, the man, from God for me. Mm, that's key there. Uh, from God. From God. <laughs> yeah. And the way I feel is, if it doesn't happen, then like you said about five, ten minutes ago, mm -hmm. I have myself content and doing what I need to do to live out my life. Would I rather be with somebody? Of course. But I've just been a woman. I'm not going to be with somebody for the sake of having a man. I'm not doing that. Um, I've grown enough to love myself enough to realize I'd rather have my peace, my privacy, and live on my purpose and in my passions than be with somebody just because he looked good and he got money and he drives this and he lives in this zip code. I don't care about that. But I do believe in my heart, and I will say there's a, a little something on the side that might be coming into something. But we're in friendship right now, and I like the fact that he's really pursuing me in the way that a man should. He lives in another state, but that's okay. That's okay. Doing, and he's made his intentions known. Oh, love it. I love to hear that. Yeah, yeah. And it's early, but... You know, I, I, I just, I don't think it's too late. I think if God has a plan for me. Which that does, in his time, not, no, wait, wait, wait. Not, not if God has a plan. God has a plan for you. Okay. God's plan for me. I believe it's going to happen. And I'll be sure to send you an invitation. All right. Okay, girl. <laughs> but, you know, I love what you, what you just said. You said, if it doesn't happen, why, right? You talked about having that peace privacy, 
passion and living out your purpose. And mm -hmm. yes, I know it's easier said than done because some people will say, well, you know, you married, so what you know, you just, but you know, I've been there and here is Christina, who is a single lady. That's why I'm talking to Christina, my beloved friend, single lady, because she knows how you are feeling. And this is coming from her. And this is where we are here to uplift you and encourage you to keep going. No matter your status, keep going. Whether you're single or married, enjoy your life. Find contentment in your life. Live with purpose and on purpose. Yeah. Stay busy. Find things to do. Travel. Do you. Do you. And look in the mirror and just smile and, and, and see what God's beautiful creation. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise or make you feel otherwise. You are beautiful. And act like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Read my lips. Own it. Own it. Yes. I, I love what you said, Deb, because I took my first real solo trip in um, April. I mm -hmm. had a to Orlando at the um, um, Hilton Resorts. And I, I, did, I thought about inviting a few girlfriends. And I was like, no, I'm going to do this for me. When I tell you, it was the most exhilarating experience. I ate where I wanted. I went to sleep when I wanted. I woke up early when I wanted. I prayed when it was so refreshing. And so I will say to the ladies that are listening, it is okay to travel by yourself. It's okay for you to dine by yourself. It's okay for you to go to the movies by yourself. Really, a lot of this really is about self-love. I can say for me, until I learned how to love Christina, mm -hmm. Christina, appreciate Christina, mm -hmm. forgive Christina. Some of us give ourselves for the things that we experienced in the past, for the relationships and the marriages that failed. You really have to forgive yourself and you have to know that greater is coming, but you've got to transfor your mindset. Yes. You know, yes. Believe differently, think differently, breathe differently, pray differently, do things differently. It may feel or make you afraid, but I promise you the first time that you do that thing that you've never done, You'd be like, oh my God, Deb was right. Christina was right. I'm going to do more of it. That's when you get in that place where you start to open up yourself. And then guess what? He just might find you. Mm -hmm. Optimistic. I love that. He just might find you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're doing something else, you never know. Yeah. He might yeah. just find you. That right person God has for you. And I love the two things you just said. You said self-love. Well, you said self-love, but also self-care is important. Ladies, love mm -hmm. yourself. Love being with you. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. You've got to love yourself. When you love yourself, then, then you can really love someone else. Facts. Mm. That's being on the airplane, and they always say, um, put on your Air Max, your, your oxygen mask first. You can't save your kids or your husband or anybody if you don't have your mask on. And so sometimes for those of us who have not known how to practice self-care, we're so busy giving and saving everybody else. Well, guess what? Put your mask on. Save yourself. Love yourself first. Then... I can go, Deb, come on, let me treat you to get a massage, get a pedicure. But if I'm not doing that for me, I'm not going to be so enthused to do it for somebody else. And if I do, I'm not being true to thine self. Yes, yes, yes. And ladies, um, when we talked about um, traveling by yourself, solo traveling, there is a video that I have there with Sevita. She also is a single lady and she started traveling by herself and she's given some great tips. So I'm going to drop that video also in um, the description so you guys can take a look at that.
So mm -hmm. you can do it. You can do this. Yeah. And also a massage and all that stuff. That's Sarita too. She gave me that massage. <laughs> you know, she came to my home and gave me that massage. Treat yourself. Treat yourself to a facial massage. Well, she didn't give me a massage. She gave me a facial. Okay. Getting it right. She gave me a facial and a little massage up here. It was great. Treat yourself, ladies. I'm going to drop that video also in my description. There's just so many things that you ladies can do. And, and know that we love you. We love you. And that's why we're here talking to you and with you. And Deb, I want to also say, too, when we talk about doing things, you know, uh, one of the things I used to do, I used to do these um, soul food Sundays. Mm. After, I would invite people over. And sometimes it was just the girls. And then I would have these happy hours on Friday nights for after work. You know, they came over and we had little finger foods, maybe a little wine. And it was just a nice way for us to let our hair down, take our wigs off, you know, just really be real and talk about real life situations. No judgment zone. Mm -hmm. yep. have at least one or two good girlfriends that you really can't get that real with. So maybe for you, if you're alone, maybe you want to plan a girl's night out or maybe just go out and have brunch or maybe have dinner. But it doesn't always have to be a ma with a man. And and we're not male bashing here at all. No, we're not. We're not doing that. No, we don't do that. Mm -mm -mm. But it's important for you to know that there are many of us who will support you in, you know, helping you to figure out, you know, what things are available. There's Eventbrite. There's so many things. And with social media, there's no reason for us to sit at home crying, being alone, feeling like we're not pretty. No, you have to play up your pretty. You know, get you a cute little hot red sexy wig or get you <laughs> house done or put on some bright red lipstick and dance if you want to dance. Uh, the pink, uh, pink lipsticks. <laughs> okay. But I'm telling you, you have to exercise self-love. Yes, self-love is important. And that's one of the things that I talk about in my book too, about self-love, self-care, self-acceptance. You've got to take care of yourself, ladies. This is mm -hmm. about you. This is yeah. about you. And by the way, there's the book. This book will encourage you and uplift you also. If you're feeling low at any time, get this book. It's going to uplift you. That's what this is about. We are uplifting you. And I'm going to also drop my um, email. If you want to reach out to me, email. That's fine. But share share with us ladies and pass this on to other ladies that you know other single ladies out there just don't keep this for yourself or to yourself share this with your single lady friends yes. please please so that they can also be encouraged and uplifted because that's what we want to uplift you ladies we want to uplift you we love you yes yes and I have the books. The book is on my shelf. So if anybody wants to get together and do a book club of Dev's book to encourage yourself, listen, my home is open. You know, if you want to do an uh, online Zoom, Deb, you could host. Oh, it, yeah. Right? Oh, oh, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a Zoom lady. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom lady. So, ladies, we really want you to know that Deb and I have had so many conversations and this conversation kept coming up and we wanted to, or we want to encourage you to know that you're not alone. I promise you, I have tons of stories. You know, I laugh about them now, but at the time I didn't know how to, but you're not in this by yourself. So please don't feel like you have to stay isolated. Right. We don't want, enemy wants that, but we don't want it and God doesn't want that either. So be encouraged by that. And don't feel ashamed, don't feel embarrassed to share. We are not here to judge. Right. As Christina said, we're not judging you. We are not here to put your business out there either. I don't do that. So trust me, whatever you say to us stays with us. Okay. But yeah. if you need to talk to someone and you're, you're feeling some kind of way or any kind of way, please reach out. Please, ladies, you you don't have to do this by yourself. Let's get together and let us encourage each other, uplift each other, and love each other. Okay? 
I love it. So Christina, any, any last words for your, for these single ladies, these beautiful single ladies? So I want to say to you, beautiful single ladies, that woman here, if you talk to her and if you have questions, you're going to get good, honest truth. If you have a question about a man, let me tell you something. I showed this lady a picture of this fellow several months ago. And her spirit of discernment, when I tell you, was spot on. I didn't get what she meant at first. But when I tell you, if you talk to her and you ask her a question or you send her a picture, the spirit of discernment is, I'm telling you, it's on this lady. So I want to say, Deb, I appreciate you so much. Do you know it will be almost one year that we have met each other, but we it feels like I've known you forever. Same here, same here, same here. And you know what I always ask you? What? How old are you? <laughs> so this is one of her questions, right? When you have a situation and you are kind of going back and forth, teeter-tottering and trying to figure out what should I do? So Deb will say, how old are you? So when she says that, that means I need to get myself together and I need to make a decision. So how old are you? <laughs> I love you for that. I and love you. I love you too. And we have so much fun when we talk, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So so ladies, any so Christina, any last words of encouragement for our beautiful single ladies? You know, I would say own it, like own your life, own the position that God has given you. Stand firm in your position. Love yourself, forgive yourself, let go of what was and be excited about what's to come. You got this. You are more powerful than you know. Ah, There's so many things I could say, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Just be encouraged and live your life on purpose. That's what I would say. Yes. And never lose hope. Mm -hmm. There's always hope and continue to trust God because God knows what's best for you and he has your best interest at heart. So trust God. So ladies, this has been a great conversation with Christina. And again, Go to Greater Is Jesus In Me YouTube channel. And you know what to do. Subscribe now. Be blessed. And until next time. <laughs>